our mission statement is to enlighten all Americans of the plight of the African-American cowboy. My name is Wilbert Freeman McAllister, A.K. Cowboy. They call me that cowboy. Maybe it's my hat, my buckle, and the way I dress. I don't know, but I am a cowboy. It wasn't thought up on the silver screen. It was thought about on them slave plantations. You might as well come on over here, boy. Come here. Come here, come on. Prince. Prince. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. My baby, get some. Let me know you're active, boy. That's right, that's right. You're acting like you're all scared of a camera. You're a movie star, boy. Come on here, fella. Welcome to the ranch. How you doing? Huh? Looking good. When I was overseas in Okinawa around southern black GIs, they were telling me history that I wasn't aware of black history. It was all new to me because I was raised up here in California Central Valley. Then I found out about the word cowboy, that uh, you know the first cowboy is a black man. I laughed and I said, no, man, that, that ain't right. He said, yeah, man, it's a slave term. What are you talking about? He said, well, you know, back in slavery, they had a field boy, and a field boy worked in the fields, right? I said, yeah. Then they had a, a house boy. I said, I know what a house boy, he worked in the house. He said, yeah. Then they had, uh, they had to get another boy to take care of the cows and take care of the pigs and the chickens and whatever, and the barn. But they didn't want to bother the field boy. They didn't want to bother the house boy. So they called that boy there a cowboy. That we were there at the beginning, the movement to the West as black Americans. Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, we band together and we came this way. We brought cattle out here. And I am the current president of the Oakland Black Cowboy Association. And I've been the president for about 18 years now. Our organization is based on education. And we teach, whenever we can, the traveling route of the American Black Cowboy that's been left out of history books. Yeah, it's been said. Come on, come on. But if you don't know your past, and you lost, to be beat down is when you know you're not equal. You know that they're going to pull you over and ask you some silly, dumbass question. Where are you going? Who car is this? Being black in America, this sometimes takes a toll. But when you know your history, when you know that you are of a strong people, and you know that you are intelligent people, it just, it got to stick in there. You figure things out. Nineteen sixty-five, I got honorable discharge from the United States Army. 
I came up here looking for a job, and I got a job at Hunters Point Naval Shipyard, and I found me a place to rent here in East Oakland. The about is like this, man. I'm raised up in the country, and I didn't do no cowboy boots. I didn't do no cowboy hat. But one of my homeboys came up around about in 1968, 1970. We were raised up together. We used to pick cotton together, go to school together, and all that. He came up here with a cowboy hat on. This boy wearing a cowboy hat. And I challenged him. I said, man, excuse me, what you doing with a cowboy hat on? He said, oh, man, this is what's happening, man. And I looked at it, and it looked so good on him. I asked him, man, can I put it on? He said, yeah. So I put it on. I looked in the mirror, and I did all that. And I thought I looked spectacular, man. I said, ooh, man, this is good, man. And I didn't want to take the hat off. He said, man, you going to give him a hat? I said, no, man, I don't want to give you that hat. I said, can I have this hat? He said, man, you going to take my hat? He said, I come from Madeira. I said, I'm a Madeira boy. Let me have this hat. So we got to talking, and the man gave me the hat. 30-32. And I went to a party, and another one, another one of my cousins looked up and said, hey, Wilbur, say, you look good with that hat on, man. He said, but uh, you ain't got it right, man. You got to get you some cowboy boots. And I ain't never thought about wearing no cowboy boots. He said, come on, man. He took me to a Western store, and I've never been to a Western store before in my life. Thank you, man. No, but I will give you a new baseball uh, cap. Sure, I did like I wear a baseball cap. Oh, yeah, well, that's why I'm going to give you one. You probably won't take it down. And since then, it's the cowboy boots and the cowboy hat. And then I graduated to the cowboy belcom. And that's me every day, man. You see the lady pulling a wagon? She's just trying to make it, man. Everybody got a little hustle in America, trying to make everybody don't have, it, you know, peaches and cream all, all the time. Then after a while, I started talking to some of my older cousins. They took me back to Texas in conversation. Boy, you look just like your granddaddy. I never heard that before. What you talking about? Is your granddaddy was a cowboy. My mama never told me that, but my Texas cousin was raised up in Texas, tell me I look like my granddaddy. So yeah, and then you know your granddaddy was a cowboy? I said, no, he was a, he was a rancher. That's my mama. Here's a picture of me and my two boys here. That's me and that's my brother there. And there's a picture of me and my son here, before he died, and there was Brian. Lamont McAllister. And yeah, you see, that's the year I got, that's when I got married, 1962. So I came back to my hometown and bought them boots there that was about 40 years ago. And I just never threw them away. I don't had, had, had them redone about three or four times, but when the leather got to breaking up on me, it was so comfortable, I just couldn't throw them away. <laughs> and today, <laughs> you can see all the way through there. <laughs> if I turn this way, yeah, I can see you. Can you see mine? <laughs> My son was born and made, he just had a birthday yesterday, he made 55 years old yesterday. But he was, he got killed when he was 26 years old in East Oakland behind, I think it was behind drugs. Uh, him and his buddy had some kind of way got in some kind of conversation. I never heard the whole true story about it. 
he got shot in the finger with a 25. It ricocheted off his finger, hit him right in the heart, and he bled to death. And I'm the one who had to go recognize him. I was hurt, my wife was hurt, and it was an ugly situation at that time for me and my wife and my family. But I, I, I believe in God, I'm a Christian, and I believe in prayer, and we prayed our way through it. From coming in here at an open mic, a jam session, I had the nerve to sign up the list, be called up. And from that, I got a, a gig right here at Eli's, where it was my show. But now I gotta get a band. So being around in the circuit, just looking and listening, you got so many guitar players, so many drummers, so many bass players, so many saxophone players, and all this here that I found myself trying to pick a band up. Then the guy said, well, you got it. what's the name of your band? So I said, well, I'm Cowboy and the Sometime Blues Band. It's very exciting and fun. And I just can't get enough of it, man. The Oakland Black Cowboy Association. This is where, in Defermy Park, this is where we have our meetings. This is where we have our great parade right here. And we've been doing it for 46 years. Unfortunately, due to this pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19, we had to cancel our parade for this year of 2020. Ow! I said, ooh, Bobby, uh, Bobby, all right, Bobby, make me work there, make me dance. Come on, Bobby, make me move. Eli's. He came here and got up on the, you know, and wanted to sing. And I told him, come on. I drug him up on the stage. And he was unsure of himself. And I told him to get up there and do it. And then once he did, he discovered he liked it and that he could do it. You know, and now we can't make him sit down. You know? <laughs> no, he's he's a good guy, man. He um he does a, he does a lot for the community, you know, which in my book carries a whole lot of weight. Um, and he comes down there, you know, and he, he gets on stage. And he's, what, what, hey, Bobby. I was welcome on the stage anytime I'm playing anywhere. I don't care where it is. So if he shows up and he wants to sing, I'll get him on the stage. It's, um, because it's what he likes to do. You know, there's something that everybody is really good at, but they've been going all their life doing other stuff to get by. And then once they get to a point where they can kind of relax and kick back, that thing that's that, that got the fire going in their heart, it takes control and it, it's got to come out. You know, he's more energetic, you know, and he's more animated when he's in president mode because he's got more to do. You know, but when he's on stage, that animation comes out in a different way. The people all respect him. They love and respect him, which is, says a lot. It says a whole lot about people. I haven't seen a camera like that in a long time. Is that a new camera? Miss Mike and the Cowboy. You know, I used to ride horses too. Where? In, in Africa? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Wait, hold, 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 hold. Western, I, need though. This. I, I need this. I need this. You're from Africa, mm -hmm. and you used to ride horses in Africa. Mm -hmm. 
how you ride a horse in Africa? I don't, I don't laugh at me. I mean, no, no, no. we Western, we do a certain kind of thing. I know about the English. Yeah, no, we, did, we did English. Oh, yeah. you did that, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I prefer it to Western. <laughs> Is that, you've done Western with Western Saddle? Yeah, style? I've tried Western Saddle before, yes. but I guess I'm so used to the other that. Yeah, like, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> So you look better, man. So what? You're supposed to. <laughs> oh, is that going right? What made you stop and ask questions? Not every day you see a cowboy. A black oh, is cowboy. that right? <laughs> Amen. People of color had a very important part in the development of these United States movement to the West. It's been lost in history, and that's our mission. And that's my story, I'm sticking to it. Amen. Let me sing, sing your love song. 